Welcome to another issue of Fireside Chats. I'm your host, Mr. Mauer, and with me as always is the marvelous maestro of music and more, Mr. Moshko. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. And can alongside... Oh, yes, you can. All right. You know what? Yes, you can. Thank you. But alongside him is a reunion again, the big baby himself, Mr. Baby Huey. What is going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yes, we I'm are. Uh, <laughs> we're taking <laughs> over again. Uh, we didn't tell Menti what time we were recording this week, so it's a toying around reunion. We're going to talk nothing but toys this week, right? Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> As much as I'd love to, I'm sure our fans will be like, where's the news? Because it's Wednesday, and that means... Time for the news. It's time for the news. That is new. <laughs> That's breaking news. And just that so you know, Menti, the... I stole your fireplace. So, oh, <laughs> it's still warm. You just, you just went it's in toasty. and stole your fireplace? <laughs> just grabbed it. Um, it's been a pretty good news week. We've got a ton of stuff like Comic Con. It's on. It's off. It's on. It's off. <laughs> and how do you follow that up? <laughs> but with Sebastian Stan agreeing to play Luke Skywalker. Nice. And we got Suicide Squad trailer and more King Shark. More King Shark. Before we get into that, let's start with some. In my opinion, some cool logistic news. Uh, so Marvel is going the way of all the other comic companies, it seems, and is getting rid of Diamond directly um, and moving on to Penguin Random House as their main distributor for their comics. And we've talked about DC doing this a few months ago, and most recently, Sci- uh, what is it? Source Point Press is, has a deal in going through them. Mm-hmm. Um, this seems to be the move. Because they have access to the books, the magazines, and like a broader uh, array of publications. And they still will be able to get stuff, you know, comic shops will be, still be able to order through Diamond. It's just not Diamond getting directly. So I don't know if that's going to cause any delays or anything. But this is big news because they've been with them since 97, I think, yeah, it's good. as the exclusive distributor. Years. Um, and Marvel tried doing it on their own around that time, and that's actually them trying to do it on their own is what triggered Diamond to become the Monopoly. Because they saw the comic companies try to do it on their own, so they went around buying all these little companies. It took 25 years, but we finally have, you know, another distributor other than them. So I think this might, it might even affect the, the prices that we're seeing. What do you guys think? Um, absolutely. Uh, you know, this was really interesting to see, um, uh, you know, just before when, uh, DC kind of backed out of, uh, using them as a distributor, I kind of jumped on the, the, you know, purchasing through who they were using at the time, which has now changed yet again. Um, where this will affect everybody uh, or potentially affect everybody is, uh, diamond is essentially going to be just a middleman wholesaler. Uh, when this all goes down. So they'll be buying from uh, Penguin and then passing that, you know, basically they're going to increase their prices. So you may see a lot of people jumping off of buying through Diamond and getting them directly through Penguin um, or, you know, passing that price along to the consumer. Uh, It's very similar to a lot of, um, case in point, it's very similar to me. So I can buy through Hasbro or I could buy through, like Entertainment Earth. Prices through Entertainment Earth are going to be a bit higher than buying through um, Hasbro, just because you're not dealing directly with the, con- the, with the actual um, company. So it's going but to be a little bit along perks. the same lines. There are Like perks. Diamond will still have perks for people to buy them, um, things such as like exclusives, since they have a larger buying power for, as a distributor, like they can get some cool things like that. And they've got relationships with the comic shops already. 
Uh, so some people don't change just because it's easy. Uh, so we'll see what's going on. They did kind of help save Marvel. Like, Marvel was going through their bankruptcy in the 90s, so they had no choice but to go with Diamond. So Diamond would kind of take all that and put the money out. Uh, and Diamond seems like they're okay with it. They wanted to make sure that everybody knows that it's going to be business as usual for them, but this is still pretty big news. In the past year, this pandemic's affected the comic industry more than we anticipated, just mm -hmm. with kind of pressing the reset button on a lot of different things like distribution and release schedules and, and things like that. So it's going to have long-time implications for the future of comics. But that's the nerdy stuff. <laughs> we're talking business today <laughs> <laughs> i always like the, the kind of the inside baseball of the comic industry and what's going mm -hmm. on and because there's so much of that that dictates the entertainment side that we love mm -hmm. um, and i think some fans don't realize it like oh my book got canceled why it was this or they're trying to combine these books and a lot of it has to do with sales and distribution and and what's where and who gets these sweetheart deals and Sometimes it's even advertising is tied to distribution. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's talk X Men. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sounds uh, like you're excited for this one. It, it, it's a it's a funny story. Well, I I to think that this is the tip of the sword, if you will. Wow, for the story that we had been talking about, <laughs> um, with resurrections and what they really are going to mean, and I think this is where we're starting to finally see the tipping point of the philosophical kind of split in it. So in way of X number one, um, you see the mutants kind of talking about resurrection and almost like a blase type way where it doesn't mean them to them. They compare it to a human losing their virginity. Like, ah, oh, did you have your first <laughs> time yet? Um, and the, if they're thinking about death in that way, what is that doing for the decision making when they are out and about or on missions or, or leaving Krakoa? Right. They're just going to be reckless and do whatever they want to do. Uh, jokingly, it's like, you know, are you even a mutant if you haven't been resurrected? Yeah. And, mm. and they don't think highly of Wanda. Not at all. She's like a curse word, basically. <laughs> so with her no longer being a mutant, you know, and her being the cause of the mutants to go away... I have a feeling like that's going to tie into this. And I think you're going to see resurrection treated almost like a religious type divide amongst them. The people that look at it as, you know, you're given one body, like to you're not really you when you've been resurrected. And that's been kind of hinted at before we got into this storyline. But I think this is finally where the resurrection is going to be uh, the main, the main thing, if you will. With the, uh, with the Wanda drop in there, uh, I'm just wondering if, if they're going to head towards like a Wanda war with her down the road. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's more of just them really separating and getting almost the pride and religion of being a mutant. It's going the other way where they were always, you know, ashamed and hiding it, you know, and taking that, needle and pushing it to the other side of now it's proud to be a mutant and it's all about mutant and mutant culture and mutant this and where are they going to find this balance and Jonathan Hickman eased what is it a year ago that resurrection is going to be more than what it seems on the surface yeah, and he's going to dive deep into what it means this is probably the first book into that story right, we'll so. see it's out today so out today and it's got Nightcrawler in it, so. <laughs> Who doesn't can't like Nightcrawler? Wrong. Yeah, can't go Is wrong that with Gambit. Kirk. Or Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get resurrected? Uh, he has been kind of resurrected. Not in Krakoa. He kind of died, kind of didn't. He was death for a little bit. Does that count as being resurrected if you actually were death? <laughs> Maybe. Um, let's talk Comic Con. You guys ready for San Diego Comic Con? Can't wait. Let's it's go. It's so exciting. <laughs> I'm so happy it's it's happening. Or oh, wait. In, <laughs> in this pandemic world we live in, uh, Comic Con was canceled. And they didn't know if they were going to bring a new one back this year, if it was going to be next year. 
So then they said, you know what? We're going to have a smaller Comic-Con. Speaking of resurrection. Yeah, yeah <laughs> around Thanksgiving. And this news broke, what, like four or five days ago? Mm-hmm. And there was a huge backlash. Like, <laughs> of course. they call themselves the, you know, the pinnacle of comic conventions. And it didn't seem like they were taking it seriously because a small convention for them is still a massive, massive convention. Um, and what were they going to do? So then they canceled it. Sorry, you know, with the protocols and all we're going to do, but now it seems like they're, they're bringing it back again. Um, and currently we, they, they said, currently we don't know whether we're having the event in November is even feasible as we are still in the midst of the pandemic and we are optimistic about quarter four. We have not been privy to any specific information at large about large gatherings the company continued, however, it was our desire to have something in place for fans who have longed for an in-person event. We truly hope you will join us for this entry back into the world of in-person celebrations as of the community we love. Um, there was just a big wrestling convention. And there was pictures of Sting behind like this wall of plexiglass with like almost like when you go to the Target, the little slot underneath to put your, your hand through. <laughs> And even in that, you saw people with the mask, but when they got up close, like, they were taking their mask off to smile for, it, like, for pictures in it. Like, human nature right now in those situations is paying for a memory and a, a escape into, you know, this other world. Not many people are going to want to remember the mask or the pandemic. Absolutely. So you're going to see a lot of people wanting to take that mask off and try and get away. I don't think it's a good idea especially with how good these virtual events have been. They, they've been great, but like you said, it's, it's that human element that you want to be near that person. Uh, you can't, you can't change. I mean, you can't, there's nothing to replicate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see this happening at all. Oh, I don't either. For 12 to 18 months, um, especially in California. And we're, I'm not in California. I'm not based in California, but you know, the amount of information we hear about, you know, uh, what's going on there that, you know, we won't get into that, but I don't see that happening, especially in California. Yeah, it's, it's too much to talk, like to speculate right now, mm -hmm. but I, I just hope they don't. Yeah. Like rather than have the chance of something going really, really bad, like just don't. Agreed. All right. Let's move on. Can somebody tell me what's going on with Superboy? Is anybody reading? I think Huey's give, got this one. I'll give you yeah. a hint. Everything we just read in Future State is it's done. True. It's done. It's undone already. <laughs> so glad I really enjoyed that series. Kind um, of. So we know Jonathan Kent, you know, their kid, right? And now he's like an adult because he went to Earth 3 and was raised there. Not and then Earth came two, back to Earth, Earth 3. And then went to the 31st century um, and mm -hmm. was a part of, what is it, the... Legion of Superheroes? Legion of Superheroes, where he studied basically his dad through history lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a story where Superman just kind of disappears. So he came back to the current time. And we're going to need Hulk to explain to him how time travel works because i don't know how this is doing it in dc but he came back to try and change the future which was his current past which is superman's future <laughs> i've said this before but when will then be now <laughs> soon um soon. uh but he goes and there's this big battle going on and superman's kind of holding off these aliens and through this like rift and jonathan thinks this is the moment and he's pleading with his dad to stop, like he thinks this is going to happen. And Superman kind of disregards him, saves the day. And then afterwards, Jonathan is like, well, what does this mean that it's been changed? That seemed like the big moment. Like, he's unsure now, but it looks like they may have changed the future for future state in that moment. Okay. Or Superman's or... going to disappear, a completely different reason. <laughs> That wasn't in the history books because we know how history can be rewritten. Interesting. So, um, Jonathan Kent as Superman, Superboy, mm. 
He's more of a Superman now. He's not really a boy. Um, I like the character. Um, he was really cool, and from what they're saying is he could be more powerful than Superman. Really? Yeah, so we'll see what happens, but I'm excited for them to have this story with Superman and see what's going on and and take what we thought with Future State, and it really could just be an alternate story. They separate it from the current DCU and just tell it as it was. Like They don't have to worry about backdating anything or anything tying into it. It just becomes its own thing that plays with the history of DC. Uh, right now, last week, uh, the Teen Titans Academy came out. And if you read the Teen Titans or the Titans um, uh, Future State, everything that happened in that is happening right now in that book. So, really? So the Future State for Titans is current in Teen Titans Academy. They talked about... Uh, they had a birthday party for Nightwing. He had got what he had a present that no one knew who gave it to him and it had the ma- the mask of uh, red X in it. Well, that's huh. exactly, that's exactly what happened in uh, teen Titans Academy number one. So, well, uh, so some they're picking and choosing, I assume from future state of what stories they want to go. Yeah, it's, this is fun. This is creating the, I don't know. And putting some fun of uncertainty into DC. Um, we also have a fun sidekick for Batman. <laughs> kind of. I mean, she's Is fun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> Great. I would, I would say <laughs> not really fun, but crazy, entertaining. Um, Harley Quinn is Batman's <laughs> new sure. sidekick. Kind How of... is this? What's going on? Like... So basically, uh, Harley wants to do something, and okay. she d- she wants to. Batman has basically put her in charge of re- uh, rehabilitating the people that were under Joker's charm, if you want to say it, as as she was back in the day. Uh, all, all of his min- minions from Joker War. Okay, she's gonna try and uh, rehabilitate them. So, so she's helping out, kind of. I mean, it, listen, we've seen this. He had this in a comic. What was it last year? Where he kind of teamed up with her. We have the the animated series. Like they want to make Batman and Harley happen. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna happen. Um, but to to me, this is. Batman going, I'm tired of hearing you want to be part of the family. Just go do this and you'll, you'll be, you know, you'll be, uh, you know, off in the distance and not to really, really worry about you. All right. Well, let's move on to TV with some sad DC news. This sucks. It is upsetting. <laughs> the greatest DC TV show of all time. Of all time. <laughs> Asterix. <laughs> Except for Swamp Thing. Mm. <laughs> Network television. <laughs> Network television. There we go. <laughs> um, Superman and Lois is on break until May 18th. Why? That is a long goddamn break. And we why is it on break? break? Because Supergirl's back? Well, y- yeah. I mean, unfortunately, they had to take a break due to COVID. Yeah. Oh, and what? we'll see what happens. It makes sense to... Uh, I hate what, like, The Rookie did, where they had a few episodes, had to take a break, then did two episodes, then took a break for football, then had a few more episodes, then took their normal mid-season break. Like, at least Superman and Lois is taking... They did as much as they could. They kind of made it to where their mid-season break would be. They're basically doing a huge break, and they might have one more break, rather than two episodes a break, and kind of scattering it. Yeah, so my, this... my thing is... Yeah, Moscow. I was just going to say, so this isn't a case of them not having the rest of the season done. It's just a matter of a normal break. They're going to throw another show in there, see if it catch, you know, catches a little of column A, a little of column B. Okay. Um, there was, they did have to take a break due to the COVID restrictions and filming, mm-hmm. but I still think they have the next episode or two done. Right. But CW is one of those networks where they like having at least a couple weeks there because they, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed 
they can move stuff randomly throughout their season. There's some times where you go, oh, this show's Thursday. Now it's mm-hmm. now it's Tuesday because this show's here. Like mm-hmm. they've got a lot of of shuffling they can do. So it's been really really good. If you're not watching Superman do, and Lois, do yourself it's worth a favor. watching again. That's, that's um, it. if you were a person who didn't like Superman in the Snyder cut, you will get your Superman in mm-hmm. this show. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Um, it really, it, every single piece of nostalgia that Snyder disregarded with the costume and, you know, even down to the way that Clark was raised and like, and, and being, you know, no matter what going and saving people this has. So there's one, there's one thing I want to check out too. I need to go back and rewatch it at the end of crisis when the, when the world came back, right? Right. Superman's flying and he gets a call from Lois and says, Hey, we got to take care of our two boys. And he questioned that for a second. Now we pick up the show and they're teenagers. Time, timeline wise, you know, when did that happen? So I brought that up on the show. I could have swore they said they were taking them someplace to raise them. No, 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 that was, that was, they were, t- they were taking her off world to have the birth. Okay. Was, that was, but, that was in the, be- that was in the beginning of crisis. So are you thinking this show is way in the future of the other season? I'm thinking shows? this is maybe five, six, seven years in the future because at the start of crisis, they, she just gave birth. And now at the start of the show, they're teenagers. They're so, 16. So it's not five, six, seven. It would be 15 years in the future. <laughs> true, true, true. So I'm just wondering with the multiverse being reshaped and reformed, you know, at that final scene, were they already teenagers or were they still being babies? That's the only question I have. Yeah, we'll so, see. So then, you know, maybe we'll get some cameos after the other shows end. I have a feeling that that's why they're ending the other shows. This is now their central point. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And mm-hmm. they want to make everything line up and kind of do a, a soft reboot. Not even a reboot, just a, a realigning, if you will. So I have a feeling we're going to get Supergirl on it, but she's going to be a, Older. a more Older. established Supergirl, so they don't want to just bring it over. We're going to get Green Lantern, but it's going to be Diggle already already established as Green Lantern. I'm still waiting for him to cameo on the show. Yep. Um, let's talk about some more uh, DC news. Uh, we got Batwoman. Bringing one of my favorite characters to the small screen. Black Mask is on Batwoman. Hmm. You know, I saw that information the other day. I thought about you, and then I <laughs> started doing something else. Just because it didn't, it didn't <laughs> He's that grab me like it should. <laughs> well, I, this is intriguing. The moves they made in the past two weeks makes me think they weren't really prepared for Ruby Rose's exit as much as they made it seem. So I have a feeling the first, however many episodes of the season were them just saying, we have to put a show out. We're locked into like, this show has to go out. And they were brainstorming the whole time to see like, how can we move forward? With them bringing Kate Kane back, I think it is what I said last week. We're going to get Orphan. We're going to have the two different Batwomen. And that allows them to re kind of structure the show where the new Batwoman is almost like her Robin, a younger sidekick that she can kind of almost have a balance with. And then we can go a little bit darker and have uh, Black Mask be the main big bad and almost, again, do a soft reboot there. I'm sorry, it's getting forward. really warm back here if you're, if you're watching this <laughs> fire. It's freaking me out a little bit. Um, <laughs> sorry, visual but, joke. Check it out on YouTube when it posts. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited for next season of Batwoman. I don't know if I'm going to watch the rest of this season. Um, but I really think next season where they can season two of Superman, the season three of Batwoman, I think they can play around and do some really cool stuff. What do you guys think? It's definitely going to be interesting to see what they're, they're doing moving forward with all this. It's going to be hard for me to jump back into that show. I'll, you know, <laughs> it was so bad. Try to give it another shot. I don't, I don't know. I keep seeing like the commercials for Flash also, and I'm like, eh, I don't really want to watch the show. I, I watched the season. Superman. I watched the season premiere of Flash, <laughs> eh, and I watched the season premiere for Batwoman. And I was like, all right, but I just keep forgetting about it. Mm. I mean, Batwoman, there's 
what we're mid second season, something like that. Like that's easy to jump into. It'd be really hard for me to jump into flash with what's it at seven seasons right now or. And l- last week or week before they basically wrapped up season six. Remember they had to end three episodes early. They mm-hmm. finally just aired those three episodes. Yeah. That's a lot to get caught up on. Well, something that's a lot to get catch caught up on, but worth it. Lucifer season B set to debut <laughs> May 28th. Um, and season six is wrapped. Good. So they have season six wrapped. That's the last season for now. This is now <laughs> the third time we've had a last season. Um, cause it got canceled. Then they did one more season and then they're like, Oh, we're going to do one more. And then they, you know, we're going to do one more. So this show is the show that, Deserves to keep staying on the air. Uh, the mid-season finale, God shows up again, and he's uh, is it Alanis Morissette? No, he's the Allstate <laughs> guy from uh, Major League. Uh, I know who you're talking about. He was in Major. Yeah, with the deep voice. Yeah, Joe. Oh, um, oh God, he was, he was Serrano. Yeah, he was. He was, he was Serrano. He was Palmer, President Palmer in Twenty Four. Well, that yeah. <laughs> you didn't know the Allstate guy no, was Serrano? I didn't Serrano? know he was Serrano. Oh, well, he's, he's God now. He was always um, God. All right. Let's get in real quick to some Disney Plus news. Dennis Hay- Haysbert. Yep. So we've got... <laughs> Sorry. We've got Sebastian Stan saying he would play Luke Skywalker. This has been a rumor that's... Well, not a rumor, but it's been a uh, fan idea. He, he's agreed. Ages. He says, I'll do it. There is one catch, though. <laughs> he has to be asked by Luke Skywalker to take the role up. So if Luke Skywalker says, hey, I want you to take over the role as a young me, he would do it. So if I'm Disney and I go, hey, Sebastian Stan, here's $10 million to play Luke Skywalker, do you really think he's going to say, well, I have to go ask Mark? I think he would. <laughs> because if, if Mark Hamill, <laughs> if Mark Hamill has the power that he says, I don't think they should do this, it could ruin his career. Like, that's a backlash that I don't know as an actor you want on you. Now, I don't think Disney would ever put him in that spot. And I don't think Mark Hamill would ever say no. Right. So it's kind of a moot point there. But let's just say it's not even that he takes the role. Mark Hamill doesn't give his blessings because he is, it's kind of taking over his thing. That could cause a lot of bad press for Disney. You saw what happened last time Mark Hamill gave them bad press. Like people started boycotting the movie, like him just saying that he didn't like one thing about it. And they paid him a whole shit ton of money just to stop talking. So. I'd like to see it. Um, now, he doesn't look as identical to my, uh, Mark Hamill as all these pictures say. The picture people put up that's side by side is Mark Hamill and then a face blend of Mark yeah. Hamill and Sebastian Stan. Mm-hmm. Yes. He looks close. Mm-hmm. That stupid uh, John Krasinski photo as uh, Mr. Fantastic or whatever yes. Reed Richards. Like, There's a lot ca- of it's airbrushing going on. It's actually Cap's body. So, anyway. <laughs> I hope that um, never real... happens, by the way. I do not want to see him as Reed Richards. Really? Moving on. Wow. Real quick. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We're going to have a whole show on it on Friday. So come listen on that. We're not going to talk any about it this week, so you're going to have to wait a few more days. We get John Hamm cast as Iron Man. Wait, what? Yep. Ooh. John John Hamm is the new Iron Man. Really? We have a new cap. Now we have a new Iron Man. Mm. This Iron Man, however, is in the Hulu, Hulu show, uh, MODOK. So ah. that robot chickeny type show that we just got a bunch of a new clip of, it looks, looks funny. Um, if you took the Harley show with robot chicken and put it into one, that's what this is. So they're not taking MODOK very seriously. No, no it's, it's MODOK. I mean, come on. The Avengers don't even take him seriously. <laughs> it depends. It look, it he funny. can be written pretty well. Like yeah, he if can. he's written well, but that's far and few in between. He's usually a he just looks character. Weird. Yes. Yep. 
Um, more Marvel news, and we may have talked about it. We're kind of torn on our own information here, but we got to see Oscar Isaac training a la John Wick for Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Other than the man bun, looking pretty good. <laughs> um, it makes me wonder, though, how violent is Disney Plus going to let him be? Because this training looked like he was pretty violent. It, so, it made me feel really good about the direction that this could go in. But on the other hand, yeah, it's Disney. It's, it's, yeah, it's Disney on Disney Plus. Right. It's going to be a, I'm thinking a hard PG-13 type of show, but. It looks like he shot the guy in the head in the one training sequence. Angles, yeah, but, like, you know, you'll I mean, see if it. you watched what, episode two of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, there was straight up killing happening on there. That's true. I mean, you didn't see blood mm-hmm. or anything like that. And the subject matter that they're covering is, you know, pretty intense stuff. So, you know, maybe they are moving into a more, uh, you know, young okay, adult kind of world. It's not going to be Punisher. No. All right. Who knows? We have to, we have to move on real quick. Baby Huey and Moshko, since I didn't watch it, <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll get more into it, maybe a show review pop up soon. Uh, Invincible. First I couple love episodes are out. Incredible. First. <laughs> How uh, was Mark Wahlberg in this adaptation? Not the... Uh, forget it. Keep, keep going. I'm not going <laughs> to talking about <laughs> that. Um, uh, yeah, as I know nothing about the character. I've never read any of his comics. I loved all three episodes that are out so far. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a twist at the end. I don't want to spoil too much, but a lot of blood and gore and i was shocked mm-hmm. it, yeah. it, it basically set, set set a precedent like of uh, game of thrones whereas nobody's safe <laughs> all right i'll be checking it out this weekend i just ran out of time to watch it and i didn't realize they're 42 a minute episodes, yeah, they're, so it's they're not episodes it's not short so that's good um we do have casting news in obi-wan of course we knew ewan mcgregor and hayden christensen were coming back this put a um, smile on my face but we have a, a bunch of actors coming into it. Um, the biggest name on the list for me is Han. I mean, uh, we have uh, Sung Kang from Fast and Furious. Han himself is going to be an unknown role. But we also have the actor that played Owen and Beru Lars returning from Revenge of the Sift. Uh, Sift. Sith. Um <laughs> There's some un, you know, people, the girl Moses Ingram from the Queen's Gambit hasn't really been in anything else. Hmm. Um, and then we got Baby Ice Cube. Little Ice Cube's going to be in it. O'Shea Jackson Jr. You say Baby Ice Cube to his face. We'll see what happens. I will. <laughs> um, he's, he's good. He's, he's, he's been in a bunch of things. He was, yeah. uh, but he's, he's in it. And then we've got uh, Benny Safdie, who was the director of Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. And he's Ooh. listed as a cast yeah. member, but I don't know if he's just a member of, the, like, is he an actor? He has done some small parts, mm-hmm. or is he going to be directing? Hmm. So. I don't know, but I, once you get through the initial, like, oh, this movie is just designed to induce anxiety for people, once you get past that, Uncut Gems is a wonderful, wonderful movie. Yeah, it should have won awards, and mm-hmm. Adam Sandler now has said he's going to continue to make the world's worst movies. Because they didn't give him a reward for that. Yeah. (laughs) All right, let's get into a little bit of TV news. And Menti's not here, so I can do this. Screw the Snyderverse fans. You mean movie news? Yeah, sorry, movie news. (laughs) Um, The salty, bitchy, restore the Snyderverse fans are review bombing Godzilla versus Kong because they want the Snyderverse to come back. That's, like, that's pathetic. I'm sorry. Oh, we want something in particular, so we're just going to ruin everything else. That is yeah. the most moronic idea that's, of trying to get things accomplished that I've ever dumb and also, childish. This also goes back to my hatred of Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that anybody should support them, go to their website, or use them at all because the average person just looks at that Rotten Tomato score and goes, oh, it's rotten. Okay, pass. And it can affect 
franchises and whether or not we're going to see that type of movie again. Um, now, M- Metacritic would ignore all of these review bombs because you have to be a certain type of reviewer to even have your review count on their site. So you can't review bomb Metacritic. You can review, review bomb Rotten Tomatoes. And the foreign Rotten Tomatoes score on this isn't being review bombed. Hmm. So it's got a much different score. It's, it's just weird. Don't, don't support the trolls. If you want the Snyderverse, like, do it like you did the last one. Do it with positivity. Stop ruining Godzilla versus Kong. Don't, don't change that org. Poopshoot.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Shoot. we got a date for Black Adam. July 29th, 2022. Sweet. That's fast. And furious. Starts filming in two weeks. <laughs> Not even going to comment Oh, by the that. way, hold on. The day marks, or no, I'm sorry. The 20, 20th anniversary? Yeah, 20th anniversary of Fast and the Furious um, Deluxe 4K Edition Steelbook, whatever, was released today for pre-order. So we'll get one. Best superhero franchise ever. <laughs> and and these cars back here are uh, <laughs> wonderful. Now, if you go... So, the first one was a car movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. After the third one, if you look at that series as a superhero franchise, it's it fantastic. will change the way you watch it. Absolutely. It is. You're right. Yeah. Um, it, it, and it really is. The characters in it are great. The family aspect of it is great. Like... It really is. It's one of my favorite movie franchises of all time. Mm-hmm. Rest in there's, peace, Paul Walker. There's a lot of deep cuts, and maybe one of these days we'll do a uh, full blown, you know, watch party or you know something with it because yeah, there's a lot going on there. And I, th- um, I think Minty didn't see most of them, so yeah, I don't think he saw anything past the first. He also hasn't seen Top Gun. <gasps> um, moving on past that, Suicide Squad first trailer <laughs> thoughts. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I only watched the Red Band. I don't, I don't know. I didn't see the, like... Who would the watch the regular one? one? I mean, Suicide Squad, right you watch Red Band. If you exactly. have a choice, Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to call this, so get the mic ready to drop. John Cena will be a bigger movie star than The Rock. Because the charisma mm. that he has is universal, and he always feels like a different character. Even though he's being John Cena, like, he is a very different character each time you see him. And he can play everything from the badass to like what he is in this. The scene him talking about the beach, <laughs> I laughed out loud. And if you watch the Red Band trailer, you'll know what I'm talking about. But. Uh-huh. The hope is that he lasts the entire movie because we, you know, the whole tagline of this thing is, you know, you never know. Who's... We don't need him to last. We know he's getting a show. I know, even but if it's a prequel, I want him in the full, you know, two hours of this movie because I think he's going to steal the entire show. Yeah, every scene he's in. In most movies, though, if you watch Psych, the episodes in the show Psych that he's on, the ridiculous he show. The ridiculous movie where he was a fireman. Like, the movie was yeah. decent. <laughs> it was entertaining because of him. Yes. So, um, the, the fire, one thing... Was it? Something like that. Know. WWE put it out. Yeah. Um, I do have to say, I'm a little disappointed and excited for King Shark. Yes. Um, when CW makes King Shark look cooler than you, you've got a problem. Now, it seems like they're going more for the Harley Quinn cartoon King Shark that's super popular right now, so he's a little puffy, um, and he's a little bit more funny, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dad Bod Shark, but he's being voiced by Rocky, and how awesome is that? That is freaking awesome. I'm a shark. I'm going to shoot you. (laughs) Uh, and he's going to be violent. I mean, we see him rip somebody in half. We see him like slowly chew on somebody as he eats them. So mm-hmm. it sure is good. Oh, oh my All God. Right, that's enough of that. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'm going to leave everybody with before we go in to Friday's uh, issue is Kevin Fahey kind of skirts around the fact that there's a lot of young Avengers being introduced uh, with the twins and, you know, in the Hawkeye show and what mm-hmm. we're going to talk about soon. So he's like, oh, you know, there's lots of characters in the universe and we kind of like just to put them there to see what happens. Basically saying, if you like these characters, say so. And maybe they'll get a movie. It's called Planting Seeds. It worked for Moon Knight, <laughs> goddammit. It'll work for you too. <laughs> 
But yeah, um, it's Wednesday, and you're listening to us now, probably in the morning, early afternoon, but you've got plans tonight. You are going to listen to our very rare, we don't do it often, a live episode of Fireside Chats. And we're going to have Dirk Manning back on talking about his new graphic novel, Butts and Seats, the Tony Schiavone story. But here's the kicker. Tony Schiavone is going to be on with us tonight. Talking about the comic, talking wrestling, talking comics, talking, I mean, we're probably not going to talk much because he's such a great talker. (laughs) Um, But listen in, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to go live on Facebook. to Facebook slash Welcome to Fireside and check out this awesome interview um, and talk about this book that is breaking every expectation. It's already over a hundred thousand dollars. With at this point, it's like eighteen, seventeen days left. Yeah, seventeen or eighteen. Hmm. So n- not even halfway through, and they've gone five hundred percent over the four hundred percent over the goal. Five hundred percent total. That's it's, freaking crazy. Mm-hmm. And it couldn't happen. Like every story you hear about Tony is everybody loves him. And the promos that the AEW wrestlers have been doing for this comic have been great. <laughs> so, but check it out. If you're a wrestling fan, we're going to get a little nerdy about wrestling. If you're a comic fan, Giovanni is a huge comic fan, like gigantic. He calls his office the Batcave and all like, nice. he's a nerd. So he'll get along with us. We'll see you guys tonight. But on that note, Moshko, do that thing. Oh my gosh, you need to warn me. Anyway, let me let me take a nice deep breath here. Ah, maybe one more. All right. Anyway, you can find everything that is Fireside at welcometofireside.com. You can also find us at Welcome to Fireside on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. If you're on Twitter, check out Fireside Crew. That's where you will find us also. We need to start posting there more. It's a fun place. And uh, <laughs> as always, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and tell a friend. We love those organic uh, growing of the, the, you know, everybody. Lost for words. But that's it. Find us. Who are you? I'm Moshko. Check me out at moshkocollectibles.com. <laughs> and, and I'm Huey. And make sure you go check out our shop and buy things. Ooh. Yeah, I think um, ch- we'll talk offline, but I think we should do like a seasonal, like, you know, one shot kind of thing. Like once it's gone, it's gone. I got an idea for what our first one shot could be. Nice one shot, if you will. Mm. Mm. I think I have Ruby. a sample coming. Um, <laughs> and don't forget, Baby Huey's toy reviews are back and yep. geekier than ever. So we're, we've got a lot planned with the toy stuff. Toying Around is on the verge of coming back. We have a few more tweaks. Um, I don't know if the listeners realize this. It does take a lot to get each of the individual studios up and running to go and do what we want to do. So bear with us a couple more weeks and we'll be bringing you, uh, it looks like weekly episodes of toying around because it's, uh, we've kind of figured out the, how to make the sausage here. But uh, as always, I'm Mr. Maurer. Don't forget to check us out on welcome to fireside.com. We appreciate everything I know, but it's my thing. (laughs) 